This phase is the most crucial phase of any weight transformation journey because this is the phase where most people give up. What is going on welcome back to move with joy so i'm actually bringing back an old segment that i had on the youtube channel called soul food conversations this is where we're able to sit back on the couch and just talk about everything fixing our life fixing our plates in ways that will help feed our soul that was clever that was clever you know that was cool <laughs> so today we're answering the hard question and the question is Am I truly ready mentally for a weight loss transformation slash journey? Because we can tend to, myself included, get so caught up in the vision of what we see that is possible for us as far as a lifestyle or physical appearance, but may not be as realistic in our expectations on how to actually achieve that. So we're gonna talk about that and then go over some goal setting actions that we can start taking today. Like right after you watch this video, you can start making some steps towards reaching those goals. So what I'm gonna do is give you my five steps to weight transformation. Because once you start to really go through the journey, you will realize sooner than later, that there are levels to this, honey. And once you really understand what phase you are in these five steps, then you will know what needs to be done to take that next step and go to the next phase. All right, phase one is gonna be the pre-decision slash denial phase. This is the phase where we have already established unhealthy habits through you know, circumstance, proximity, things like that. And there's no immediate reason for you to want to change anything that's going on right now. And there's no future event that's happening that may also trigger you to want to get on a weight transformation journey, like a wedding or a graduation or anything like that. I find that people in this phase tend to know that something needs to change health-wise. Like I said, there's no immediate need. So even though you may have certain symptoms, dealing with certain ailments, you found other ways to manage your symptoms, whether it be through prescribed medication or herbal, you know what I'm saying, supplements, uh, tations, things like that. Now it can take some time to get out of phase one. Mind you, phase one has been your lifestyle up until this point. So childhood, adolescence, early adulthood, late mid to late adulthood, depending on the age of whoever's watching this video. You know what I'm saying? So you have to basically, to not shock yourself with trying to get out of phase one, the first thing and the easiest thing to do is just to make one simple health swap. Like if you're somebody who loves sodas, try to opt for water out of, for two out of three meals and leave your sodas or your juices or whatever like that for dinner time. If you love sweets, don't have a sweets um, every single day. If you wanna do every three, four days, once a week, where it's not like you're completely changing everything that you've known so far, but you're making a valid effort to make a change going forward. Which brings us over to phase two. This is called the decision slash shock drop phase of weight transformation. And I say that because typically people lose the most weight during phase two because your body is being shocked initially. So it's used to having a certain kind of calorie intake, used to a certain level of activity daily, and you've done certain things to change that up and now it has to adapt to this new routine. So of course, if you're moving more, your body's gonna be trying to burn off more food and more fat for energy. That way you're able to use that to help carry you through this newfound activity. Also the phase where we get into a lot of experimentation. So you start going on YouTube, looking at people who are doing workouts, start going to workout classes in your area. You should allow your curiosity to roam on everything, movement, health and fitness related. Allow yourself to explore during phase. Too. And now you got a good little run going. You done found you a nice new routine that you're starting to incorporate into life. So now you're going into phase three. And this is where I call the plateau phase because you've established some consistency when it comes to your routine and your nutrition, making those, those small swaps that have been adding up for you over time. But now your body has begun to adapt. So weight loss is not gonna be as dramatic as it was in phase one. It does slow down. They even stop for a small period of time, but that does not mean this is the end of the road for you. 
this phase is the most crucial phase of any weight transformation journey because this is the phase where most people give up. As soon as they stop getting the results of working out and they don't see it immediately or they feel like they've only reached a certain level and they can't get quite past a certain weight point or measurement size, usually the motivation levels drop. And this is where I really want you to find something deep within or even outward that can make you hold on to your motivation. And this is where I need discipline for you guys to start kicking in as well. So if you have a routine established in phase two and you're starting to go into phase three where you're kind of like, I've done good so far, it stopped working, I don't know what's going on, do not quit. This does not mean that your body has just, it's never gonna lose any more weight than you've lost so far. It just means now that you have to change something else small within your habits and routine. So if you were somebody, like I said earlier, who had soda three times a day, you cut back to now you have water twice a day, soda once. If you start to cut off sodas completely, that will make a difference. Not saying that you have to cut off everything completely cold turkey, but taking a step back gradually over time and then making slightly bigger steps as time goes on makes all the difference. Now, phase four is where it's at. Phase four is what I call the recharge stage. That means you've gone through your hills and valleys and your plateaus of phase three and everything. You figured out what you like, what you don't like, what works for you, what doesn't work for you. And now you're able to just focus in on those small habits and just create a whole routine around it and then push forward. This is the part of your phase where you have the most fun. We can start to really, like I said, explore different like modalities of workouts. If you want to get into kickboxing, CrossFit, dance, pole fitness, anything like that. Especially when your body is more conditioned in phase four, you're able to really have some fun with a child. <laughs> And this is where you're starting to see progress resume. So now you're starting to see yourself lose weight again, or you're starting to have your body reconstructed to where you're losing body fat, building muscle. So now you're more defined, toned, shapely. You're really going to see the fruit of all your effort in phase four. So hold for phase four, y'all. And we're saving the best for last when it comes to phase five. This is when you've reached total lifestyle transformation. This is the phase where it all makes sense. It all, the math starts to math. <laughs> you're seeing, you've seen past tense, you're seeing current present tense as well, all the fruit of your labor, of all your hard work. You're more disciplined in this phase. You have a set routine in this phase. You have established boundaries and you respect those boundaries as well. Sis, your goal needs to be reaching phase five. Phase five is where it becomes easy. It becomes like second nature. You know how to live a healthy lifestyle like you know the back of your hand. And so now that we figured out how to phase out where we are in our weight transformation journeys, let's talk about goal setting. So if you guys follow me on Instagram, I did talk about briefly the book that I'm reading right now that's really helping me like execute. The word for 2023 is execution, okay? So the 12 week year, is currently my go-to favorite book. I have been reading through it, highlights and all. This book is by Brian P. Morgan and what's his name, Michael Lennington. And so they share with you a bunch of tips and tricks on how to really plan out your year. I love the idea of a 12 week year because my issue before we're trying to plan out how I want to grow my business and be present on social media, I just could not plan out a full 365 days ahead. I just like, <laughs> <laughs> for those who've been in business for years and they know but like the back of their hands they can do that 
me just getting started i needed to really just put a smaller time frame on my goals and this book really helped so i'm going to go through some of the main key points that i took away from the 12 week year book they share with us three principles and five disciplines of success and execution and so the three principles um are kind of like foundations for how your mindset should be when it goes to going into goal setting so Principle number one is going to be accountability. That is us taking ownership for however our 12 week year comes out, good or bad. So if you put in a certain level of effort towards your goals, whether it be in fitness or health or professional or when it comes to your family or parenting or anything like that, the amount of effort you put in is exactly what you should expect to get out. Principle number one. Number two is going to be commitment because you're making a promise to yourself that doing this certain thing is going to benefit you and those who you love. So the same way you want your job to keep their promise on keeping you employed and paying you on time every two weeks, the same way you hold your partner to their promises as well, keep that same energy love for yourself. Yeah, so I'm not sure what happened, but I cannot find the footage of me going over the third principle. So I'm going to just do it in voiceover. So the third principle is greatness in the moment. And that basically just means to show up for yourself every single day. Do the hard things that need to be done that you know will matter for you in the long term. Now let's go into these five disciplines. Now, number one is going to be vision. That means having a clear picture of what the future is that you aspire to. And this one is almost foundation. It should definitely be a principle because if you don't have no vision, but there is no vision that people perish. We, we know this and we hear this all the time. You have to first know what you want, see it. And once you have that clear picture of it in your mind, whether it's manifested in real time right now, know what it is that you want that way you always have a focus to come back to after that you have to go into planning this is where you bring clarity and focus to your vision and make it smaller specific that way you know what needs to be happening right now to support that future vision that you have for yourself so that can mean say this summer you want to pop out with all the skin and body yada yada and you're like okay summertime is a good two three months away for if you want the real hot months like midsummer you at least have a good four months to let's say your goal is to lose 20 pounds it's like okay 20 pounds four months break it down that's five pounds a month break that down that's four weeks in a month so what do i need to do each week to ensure that on week four or five depending on how the months play out that I'm able to reach that five pound goal? Is that me going to the gym twice a week? Is that me doing more cardio and conditioning, more than strength training? It kind of depends on what your overall goals are. Set the goal, make it specific, give it a date, a due date. That way it'll put a little pressure on that back to make sure that it gets done before that due date and then start to plan backwards. And that's how you'll be able to get ahead. Number three on disciplines is going to be process control. These are tools that help you maintain the plan that you put in place. So having like a set schedule, having set timers on your phone. So if you know that you want to get up a little bit earlier, setting a timer on your phone for 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes or an hour before what you currently wake up at now because you want to have time to work out or meditate or get a little extra work done. Those are the tools that are going to make it so much easier for you to flow through your planning and flow through each phase of your 12 week year because some things can be automated some things until they become routine you have to have like certain triggers and notifications going off to remind you to do certain things and there is nothing wrong with that do what needs to be done okay greatness in the moment <laughs> so now we have a vision in mind a plan in place we have certain tools lined up that way we can try to stay on track after that it's all about measuring your results so that can look a different way for different people some people like to use fitness tracker apps or like to use a scale personally my journey has never really relied too much on any fitness apps 
Uh, I tried to track calories for a small period of time, but I love food. I did not want to turn food into math for me. That's not fun. So that wasn't going to help me stay consistent, but it may help somebody else stay consistent. So having that or using a scale as one way of measurements. Now, of course, I prefer to use like measure tapes, like measuring inches. That's really how you're going to be able to see how your body is losing fat. Unless you have like a more advanced scale that does break down between muscle mass and fat and things like that. You're not going to be able to tell what amount of your weight is muscle and what amount of it is fat. Especially if you're starting to weight train because muscle is going to weigh more than fat. So you could see the scale go up and you're thinking you're gaining weight as in fat. But you're actually gaining weight in muscle. So... The scale, yes, you can use it. No, do not make that your holy grail on whether or not your journey is actually working. Have an outfit that you can't quite get into right now and periodically try it on. Every month, try it on. If you see it starting to get a little loose, get a little more comfortable, it's working. Taking old school measurements, you see that you're starting to lose inches, it's working. Those are like the small check-ins with yourself that's really going to keep you just hyped up and inspired to keep going. And the last thing that I'm going to cover is going to be time use, which really is just time management. So saying that, oh, I don't have enough time to go to the gym or to work out, it's not real. Who are you trying to lie to? Who are you trying to convince? You can make time for whatever you find to be a priority for your life. And you honestly don't need to set up so much time to make progress on your weight loss journey. If you set aside 30 minutes a day, you will be surprised what 30 minutes a day can do to, to transform your entire life. Start off slow. Build it up. The first thing that I want anybody to focus on is just building healthy habits. That's the first baseline number one goal is building healthy habits. And effectively using your time plays a lot into that as well because we don't want for this journey to completely take over and consume your life. Still have time to hang out with friends, get drinks, spend time with your partner, your kids, your pets, with yourself everything like that those are also things that should be priority when it comes to how you plan out your day your weeks or your 12 weeks but with that you guys i hope you found this video to be helpful hope you got some good tips things that you can implement like i said right after this video has ended you can go ahead and go into your calendars and start making some plans to get some shit done this year as always, be sure to give this video a like. Comment down below what your biggest takeaway was from this video. And go ahead and subscribe to the channel. If you stayed this long and watched me talk for this entire video and you've actually had a good time, why not go ahead and subscribe and join the family? Why not? Don't be like that. <laughs> so until next time, you guys, remember to always keep it moving.